welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast with your host, Chris Spurvey. Chris is dedicated to mentoring entrepreneurs and sales professionals through the fear of selling so they can confidently bring their product or service to market. Here's your host, Chris Spurvey. Sean, welcome to the It's Time to Sell podcast. I'm grateful for you joining me. Oh, I'm so excited to be here, Chris. Yeah, this is outstanding. I understand you've been on a couple of sales podcasts recently, uh, uh, and that's we connected, I'm going to say, a couple of months ago now. It's been a while in the making due to a couple of little uh, incidents uh, I had over the summer, but I'm really happy we finally found the time to make it work. Yeah, me too. Uh, uh, over, the, over the summer, kind of my marketing team asked me and said, Sean, I want you to try and go on 30 to 40 podcasts in the next six, eight weeks. And I'm like, well, at a half an hour each, that's a lot of time. But uh, I've actually uh, really enjoyed learning um, from a lot of people, also talking to a lot of people. So I'm definitely here and happy to, uh, to talk to your audience. Yeah. Chris. And uh, you're a fellow Canadian, which makes it even cooler. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Lots of times, most times I'm talking to someone in the US, which is also cool, but not as cool as a Canadian. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know what? It's funny. I was outside today. I'm like, you know, we didn't have much of a summer here in one, at least in Toronto. And it's already starting to get cool here. I'm like, oh, yeah. I wish I was maybe in the U.S. right now. For yeah. Me. I know. It turned, it turned here in Newfoundland uh, about a week ago where we went from having high 20s uh, uh, down to we're in the high teens now this last few days. Uh, so I'm with you. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not looking forward to the fall and winter. <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, hey, Sean, why don't you fill us in uh, on, uh, you know, I like to invite you to tell people your web website address at the front of the show so that people can uh, go check that out and uh, fill us in on kind of what brings you to doing what you're doing today. Perfect. Um, so the website is www.autoclose.com and that's autoclose with a K yes. and not a C. Uh, we changed that up and then what we're doing. So about four years ago, um, well, let's go even back even further. Uh, I did an MBA in finance actually here in Hamilton, Hamilton, Ontario. I uh, left the finance, became an entrepreneur about five years ago and started my first business, which was Exchange Leads, a data company. Um, always loved data, always loved sales, um, and then always looking for the next big thing. So what we did was we took the data company and uh, a lot of our clients that used our data said, well, I love your data, but how do I email these prospects? So what we did was we kind of put them two together, um, built Auto Close, which is uh, a sales engagement platform that has a B2B database inside. So not only can you automate your outreach, but you can also tap into our database and automatically prospect um, to individuals in the USA. Yeah, wow, that's cool. And so, so you've always been an entrepreneur by the sounds of it outside. You did your MBA in, in finance, but I mean, yeah. so did you envision a corporate job working in finance? Actually, you got it. You got, so actually, it's a funny story. I was in finance and my first day at the finance role um, during my internship my MBA, I was on the elevator on the way up and my boss was on the elevator and I just said good morning to everyone. And it was like, that was like not something you do in finance. So you just stare at the elevator screen and just stare. <laughs> and if you say good morning or you try and have a conversation, like it's like you sit behind your computer and you do reconciliations, you do profit and loss and you don't talk. And I said to myself, I'm a very social guy. Um, I'm outgoing. This might not be for me. And then I got an opportunity um, about a year later from a finance recruiting firm that said, listen, you got to be in sales and business development. And I'm like, well, let's go. And they gave me an opportunity. And then four years later, I have, uh, I have two businesses. Wow. What yeah. a story. So yeah. sales uh, and, and, you know, the people listening to this show are primarily the owners of businesses, yeah. small, medium, large. Uh, but I very much zone in on the owners uh, and helping them sell uh, because I do believe the CEO, the owner of the business needs to be the best salesperson in the organization. Um, so I'm curious, did sales come naturally to you from the get go? You know, it, it, it did because, you know, when at a young age, um, after I stopped competing in tennis, I actually taught tennis for seven years. Okay. And when I taught tennis, you know, when I was 16, 17, 18, I had to learn really quick, a, how to talk to people twice my age and B, how to try and get more private lessons than the other coaches at the country club I was working at. Yeah. Um, so it was very competitive at the beginning. And, and, and I find that, you know, just like anyone that's very competitive is good at sales um, because you either, you either hate to lose or you love to win. Right. Yes. Um, so, so that's kind of how I had the sales kind of background and entrepreneurial background was just by, by actually competing in sports at a young age. And that's when I look at salespeople now, I look on resumes to people that actually have competed in sports before ah. I hire somebody in sales. 
Yeah, that's right. I, uh, I can see that. Uh, <laughs> and I can see the correlation. There's no doubt about that. So what, when you, when, and now that you're in a position where you have multiple salespeople on your team, um, do, do you find there's any preconceived notions uh, of sales that hold people back? Uh, you know, it's, it's, so actually, funny enough about sales, it's interesting. I have my, my CTO and my marketing guy who literally have to drag me out of sales calls because I love doing them. So, <laughs> so it's, and it's like, you know, it's, it comes to a point like, because, well, A, I mean, any business owner would, you know, they know their product better than anybody else. Yes. Okay? They also know their audience, their buyer's persona. So, you know, it's tough for me when I hire new salespeople and I go on the call and I'm listening. And like, I'm on my zoom and I mute myself. I'm like, Oh, don't say like, you know, so I still get involved. I, so now I've, I've, I've got myself involved only in the bigger sales, the larger deals yeah, and the smaller deals. Um, I have my sales team doing, but you know, it's still in my blood. I love sales. I love competing to win. So yes. to, to be able to steal somebody from a competitor is still, uh, is still something I enjoy doing. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, as a part of my methodology for helping organizations. So I, my, my consulting practice is I yeah. focus on niche consulting organizations, uh, because that's my story. I built a, I built an IT consulting company and we sold it to KPMG in 2013. Yeah. And then I spent four years with, um, with KPMG as vice president of sales. Uh, but when most recently in 2017, I left KPMG and began to build a business focused in on helping niche consulting companies scale their, their sales force yep. uh, and the sales force being the deliverers of the product, the, uh, the service, the consultants themselves. Um, I leverage StrengthsFinder uh, quite a bit and I find one of my strengths that I really, you know, I, I knew I'm like you, I hate to lose, love to win. Uh, <laughs> and uh, one of my strengths, lo and behold, is, is competition. It was my yep. third, it's third on the list. And I, I never, I, when I read it uh, and saw it there, it's funny how I, my initial reaction to it was maybe negative, right? A competition, uh, but it's, it's an important element. You, you, you really got to, you know, we, we are living in a competitive world and we, uh, and it's also, I guess you could also internalize it. Uh, you know, you're really looking for problems to solve, right? And uh, every potential customer has a problem that keeps them awake at night. Let's solve that problem. And as a result of that, we get the sale, right? So sales kind of happens as a byproduct of solving the problem, which is how I kind of try to internalize it anyway. Yeah, no, hundred percent. I, I even, I even try and tell salespeople like, even when you get a no, you know, you yeah. get, uh, you know, if you're competitive and somebody says no to you, it actually makes you more want to figure out a way to get the yes. And you, you, you basically nailed it. Everyone has a problem. Yes. So, if you, if you're prospecting, you don't hit that problem, you got to go and find out what is that problem that person has. Cause when you do hit that problem, that no will become a yes. So I, I love, you know, I speak to my sales team all the time. I'm like guys, if, if somebody says no, it doesn't mean no forever. It right. might mean no today. It doesn't mean no tomorrow. It doesn't mean no from three months from now. So you got to continue to be persistent, not annoying, yes. but also try and convert those no's into yeses, into maybes, into calls. Exactly. And that'll help you obviously get those sales. I love it. Uh, so let's talk about auto close. So fill people in. I mean, I, I got a bit of an idea. It's a database. It's a data. It's a, that uh, organizations can then in turn subscribe to, I would imagine. Uh, but walk us through the, the value proposition. Perfect. So, you know, we're talking about salespeople and, you know, salespeople, A, they, they, they hate the tedious task a salesperson has to do on a daily basis. That's one thing. I find that salespeople, you know, when they do two, three follow-ups, they might be a junior or, you know, or maybe even, you know, a senior salesperson. They do two, three follow-ups. They give up. They say, this yep. person's not interested. Okay. What our tool allows you to do is automate six, eight, 10 follow-ups to continue to be persistent with that mm -hmm. prospect. So you can really personalize your outreach. So say, for example, I want to reach out to a hundred VPs of sales in Texas. I can ideally build out my sequence look in our database, choose a hundred people that are VPs of sales in Texas, press go. And until that VP of sales in Texas says, yes, I'm interested, Chris. No, I'm not follow up in six months. They continue to get those follow ups in a sequence until they take an action. Mm -hmm. So ideally you can go down South, enjoy your vacation, sip on a pina colada in the Bahamas and auto close is sending those emails for you. Yeah. I love it. So, uh, so, uh, I'm, I'm curious. I'm, and is this a piece of software where the VPs of sales have, um, have opted in to receive the information? 
It's a great question. So it's not an opt in email list. This is a okay. cold email list. Got it. Um, if, but we do have, you know, machine learning inside the software. If somebody says not interested, Chris, leave me alone, that kind of stuff, they get pushed your do not email list. But it, yeah, it's the, it's not an opt-in list. And to be honest, any data provider that tells you they have an opt-in list of 28 million, 28 million people did not opt in. No, <laughs> no, exactly. Yeah, no, I just, I, I'm trying to figure out where in the funnel this belongs. And it sounds to me like it's top of the funnel. Uh, exactly. Top of the yeah. funnel, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And who is your ideal client? Uh, you know, uh, for, uh, who's, who is the ideal client for AutoClose? How do you describe them? That's a, that's a great question. So we actually sat down, it was a, like three weeks ago on a Sunday and we did, we did on our whiteboard right here where I am and we did like a whole buyer's persona and we found out that each buyer has a different pain point. Like we're talking about different problem. So let's use business owners, you know, business owners at the end of the day, what they want to see is they want more money. They want their increased revenue. They want to make more money. They want their sales teams performing. So, you know, a business owner would be looking to auto close to increase revenue. Um, an SDR, a sales development representative might look at auto close to book more qualified demos, mm. you know, more demos equals more money for us. An SDR, um, a national sales manager might, you know, want their regional sales manager to hit their quota. So they would want more demos or calls for the regional sales manager. So I would say there's different, I mean, anybody, any business owner, or salesperson can use the platform, yeah. but the reason for them using it is very different. And a business right. owner, for example, it's, you know, give me more revenue, make me more money. Yeah, exactly. And, and the database itself is compiled from, um, it's, it's compiled from, um, I guess, obviously, I'm just wondering what the, what, what are the parameters around the data? Like uh, who, who are, so uh, maybe I'll just express this to you. Uh, I'm a part owner of a company called Dockridge Digital. Okay. Uh, and we have built a, um, a forms product uh, that has artificial intelligence and machine learning kind of built into it. So imagine an org- uh, the enterprise architecture division yeah. of, of, of a pretty you know, medium to large business because they would have to be medium to large to have an EA group. Um, and the, the EA group implements uh, the, our piece of software called Lifecycle for uh, all the forms associated with the enterprise architecture component yeah. of software. And uh, we want to now, we're, we've, we've been hired by, a couple, what, by one client, uh, a provincial government in Canada, uh, to build it, which we've now built and we retain the IP. And we've now sold it to a couple of other enterprise level clients, but we're now looking to go scale with it uh, to try to figure out what the right sales process is, right? And so the artificial intelligence, uh, it basically allows the uh, head of EA to look at a dashboard and to be able to see where in the, uh, in the kind of the flow of forms uh, through an organization the process is, uh, is dying, right? Or, or slowing down and then they can go and fix it, right? Yep. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, is, is AutoClose an application that we could use to uh, target uh, VPs, CIOs, uh, and so on? Yeah, so exactly. And you can search, so, well, A, I'll say our database inside has 28 million, but we only have US contacts in the database. Got right it. Yeah. Um, Castle in Canada, a big reason why. Yes. Um, so we actually only have U.S. contacts. However, inside the search, you can filter by company, by job level, by industry, SIC code, by revenue, by employee count, by the gender of the person, um, job, you know, city, state, all that kind of stuff. So you have about 20 filters you can filter by. They are U.S.-based. So if you want CIOs or CTOs or VP of network security in the yeah. U.S., you can find those people all on the platform. And within seconds... Decide what you want to email them, press go, and you're ready to rock and roll. Yeah, cool. Yeah, that sounds really cool. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I, obviously it's, it's email dependent. Uh, so it's, it, it kind of takes the email component of, um, of a sales process uh, top of the funnel yep. and automates that for you uh, such that you can go to Florida and drink your pina colada <laughs> and then come home to see ripe, uh, interested leads who exactly. are- exactly wanting to do a demo or whatever. I like it. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, how, how, um, what's your thoughts on the dependency of, on email uh, is it, it versus cold calling and stuff like that in, in today's world? I, I think you need more than one channel, um, which is the reason why we started with email um, and we're looking to expand. I, I think 
just as important as cold calling is kind of social touches. Mm. Um, so we're looking to somehow add some social selling, social touches. LinkedIn is a great tool where you can use um, as a salesperson or a business owner, you should be using, um, especially sales navigator and other tools. So we are looking to do potentially SMS. Yep. Um, cold calling will be next. Yep. And, then, um, and then social touching. So all three we're looking at. Because I think you need to, in your funnels, in your sequences, you need more than just email. Email is yeah. not enough these days. No. Um, so we are looking to do multi-touch campaigns very shortly. Yeah, that's fabulous. And do you track uh, open rates and stuff like that? Everything is tracked. Open rates, click rates, replies, bounces, um, do not mails, all that is tracked. And, you can, and it's all visible inside the platform. Excellent. Yeah. Sean, this is outstanding. It sounds like a phenomenal product and to know it's been built and, uh, <laughs> by a Canadian team. Uh, that's, that's outstanding. Um, what is the future for the product uh, or what's, the, what's your future from the perspective of being an entrepreneur? Are you seeing uh, this being a, uh, something you build and, and, uh, uh, you know, and grow uh, to something large? Uh, what's your vision? Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're continuing to grow it. I, I, I find um, one thing I've always liked doing is I like taking the problems that I had as a salesperson and yes. I find the problems that my sales teams always had. And I love solving those problems because if it can help our sales team, it can help many sales team. So right now we're continuing to grow the product, find out different unique ways that we can continue to um, use more channels to help salespeople get in touch with prospects. Um, because you know, as a competitive person, hearing a client that closed a deal or a client calls me and says, you know, we just closed Ferrero Rocher I got last week. And, and even though it's not, you know, I'm not making any money off them closing, it's, it feels good that yeah. uh, I can help sales. So right now, continue to grow the product, continue to add features um, and, uh, and be more feature and product driven than bringing the clients on board, which right. is one of the things I learned from my first business. Yeah. Outstanding. Sean, uh, this has been, an, I very much appreciate you coming on the show and, uh, look forward to learning more about the product and how I may be, be able to use it for Dockridge. Um, maybe just uh, close by telling people your website and we'll go from there. Perfect. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions about, you know, anything about, they can email me at Sean S H A W N yeah. at autoclose with a K.com. Um, you can visit our website, autoclose.com, obviously with a K, um, add me on LinkedIn. I'm very active on LinkedIn. I'm actually, um, we're going to be starting to do some LinkedIn live. So Chris, I might actually have you as a guest on that. I'd love to be on that. I think that would be a lot of fun. Um, uh, but yeah, feel free to let me know if you have any questions about sales, you know, being a, in business, obviously having a finance background to a business owner. Um, I'm ready to answer any questions you have. Yeah. Outstanding, Sean. I really appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you so much, Chris. Okay. Thanks for listening to the It's Time to Sell podcast at chrisspurvey.com.